the world, we just sort of broke it up into the so-called democratic West and the so-called communist East. The Soviets wanted to rule the world according to their ideology, and we in the West wanted to rule the world according to our ideology. And they were always trying to kind of get these countries that were aligned with us to align with them. And we were trying to get the countries that were aligned with them to align with us because it's really about power. All these countries started moving to the West. So the countries that were formally connected to the USSR, like Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Slovakia, Czech Republic, Romania, Bulgaria, they start aligning with the West. The Soviet Union, which is now just really becomes Russia, becomes really weakened. And so Russia has the idea that this is Ukraine right here, one of the key states. Well, at least we're going to hang on to this one. Russia took the next step and said, no, we're actually going to invade now. And now there's a battle for Ukraine. And the Ukrainians are responding. And, it, and it's a serious war. And it's very serious because Russia has a lot of nuclear weapons. And the West has a lot of nuclear weapons. And there's a lot at stake. Okay, so the first person we're going to talk to is somebody in Russia. And you can unmute, by the way. This is... Sasha. My name is Nestor and I am a chemistry major and I moved here from Ukraine around nine years ago and I started living here. Bring, can we bring Taras in? Okay, tell him welcome to Soch 119. This is uh, Camilla. Is I've been working with Camilla for I don't know maybe eight years. I think we met met, met uh, seven or eight years ago. But I circled her shoes because she's always wearing cool sneaks, um, and she works at the at the War Studies uh, University in in Warsaw. And Sasha is somebody who I met in Russia a few years ago, who's going to tell us what Russian youth are thinking and what Russian youth are saying. But her camera is off because it's just not safe for her to be talking honestly and openly about what's going on in Russia because the, the Russian government is being really hardcore. Hey, so how are you doing? Fine, thank you. What are Russian young people saying about this war? Actually, now, young people who are located in Russia here, they're not really talkative about this topic. So, but maybe a year ago when the whole story started, uh, they were like pretty strong, have pretty strong opinions against it. So, but for this like year and, and, and a month, so the whole like, this whole um, opposing, uh, opposing opinions were suppressed. So now there is like more stigmatized, stigmatized this topic is more stigmatized than it was before. Mm -hmm. So the idea, so let me see if I, I be clear about this. So first off, across the world, young people especially tend to be against war. So I expect that Russian youth are no different than youth in the United States or any other country. Right. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So there you, so the question then is, and I think you spoke to this, but maybe say it again. Like, how often do you talk about the war with your friends? Now, rarely than it was a year ago. Wait, not often, you say? Yeah. yeah. Because, do you, but do you talk about it with your closest friends? Like... It, yeah, yeah. It, with closest friends, yes. When, when, when I'm like definitely sure that the, the environment is safe in many, many uh, aspects of safety, so then uh, we can speak, but like... Mm -hmm. in, every public space there is no opportunity to speak about it so the idea is you have to make sure that 
um, the environment is really safe for you to have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, those of you, I mean, some of you are from countries where this is true. It's not true in the United States um, at this point in time anyway, not even close to it. Um, hey, so uh, can you, do you have stories of friends or people you know who have spoken about the war and they get in trouble? Actually, unfortunately, no, but only like people who were in the, on the protest, which they took place in the first like months in Russia, they were kind of arrested, but then they received like a um, fee. So for, for this, so no, not more than it, but now the situation is like this here that uh, most mm -hmm. of the people who, who were against the war, they immigrated. So, and who are, but the, those of uh, people, young people who are against, but still are here, usually they like just saving money to immigrate. So there's like this issue mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. leaving, leaving the country and then speak up openly and going to the protest, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So who's, who support, who is supporting the war? Like which people in Russia support the war? Soviet, Soviet people, like people older than 55 years, probably men, and people from, from like, um, how uh -huh. to say, like poverty or something like this. So people who have nothing, no hopes for the future. So they're, they're basically the basis of supporting mm. them then to yes. The so <coughs> he, he, you said something really important there, people with no hope for the future. Right, so people with hope for the future are obviously against the war. I mean, against everything, because it really hurts you. Your economy right now is really hurting, right? Yes, but actually maybe the most more relevant for Russians is not the question of the economy, because we kind of get used to live in a crisis situation, but more the issue of like of relatives and friends from Ukraine, because those our nations are really really connected rooted like and this 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 really like personal so issue not about like the economy mm -hmm. yeah. time scene mm -hmm.